Amen. First Samuel chapter 30 this morning as we get started. Turn on this little doohickey thing right here. Thing in the bottom. First Samuel chapter 30, please. Ziklag has been taken over by the Amalekites. In fact, they burn the city. They take, the Amalekites, they take a couple of David's wives away, Ahinoam and Abigail, captive. And so David goes for consultation, and he says, you know what? What are we going to do about this? We're just going to sit back and let these guys run around and go crazy and do what they want to do and burn Ziklag and take our stuff, take my wives? I don't think so. So David gets together, gets some consultation, and he's going to go out, and look what he does, picking up with me in verse number 16. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines, out of the land of Judah. So the narrative here, and I know I'm jumping in the middle of the passage, is this is the narrative of David comes down, they're going to go take back what um, the Amalekites took at Ziklag. And David notices what they're doing. The amount of stuff that the Amalekites have taken in their plunder and their burning of Ziklag. And the crazy thing is here, there's a, there's a great King James word here in a phrase that says, because of all the great spoil they had taken. So these boys are just sitting around partying like it's 1999. They're just going at it. Hey, you know what they're doing? They're enjoying what they took from the place they conquered. Well, go on with the Bible says, verse 17, And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day, and they escaped. Not a man of them, save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And there's nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them, David recovered all. Didn't Jesus Christ do that for you and I when he went to the cross of Calvary, shed that blood, rose again the third day, going to hell in between, paying our sin debt in his own precious blood, and rising again the third day? You know that Jesus Christ got everything back the devil took from us. He got back everything Adam wasted in the garden. That's our Savior. Well, he's foreshadowed here by a great Old Testament saint named David. The Bible says, verse number 20, And David took all the flocks and the herds which they trade before those other cattle and said, This is David's spoil. And David came to the 200 men which were so faint that they could not follow David, whom they had made also to chide at the brook Besor. And they went forth to meet David to meet the people that were with him. When David came near to him, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men and men of Belial, of those that went with David and said, Because they went not with us. We will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered, save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. Then said David, Ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us, for who hath preserved us and delivered the company that came against us into our hand. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff. They shall part alike. You know what? God rewards according to the heart attitude you have and what you do for him according to your obedience. It doesn't matter if you stick by the stuff or you're out in the main line of battle. God knows how to reward people. Go with the Bible says in verse number 25. And it was so from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. And when David came to Ziklag, he sent of the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies. Of the Lord to them which are in Bethel, and to them which are in South Ramoth, and to them which were in Jatter, and to them which were in Aror, and to them which were in Shifmoth, and to them which were at Eshtemoah, to them which were at Rachel, and to them which were in the city of the Jer uh, Jeremelites, and to them which were in the cities of the Kenites, and to them which were in Horma, and to them which were in Koration, and to them which were in Aphak, and to them which were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were wont to haunt. Father, thank you again for the morning. Pray your blessing upon the preaching. 
instruction of your word, that, Father, you would have the preeminence. It's your son, Jesus Christ, as the head of the church. We get all the honor and glory and due respect to his holy name. That, Father, you would preach through me to these folks to help them out in their daily life. Father, prepare them for the judgment seat of Christ. Prepare them for eternity as only you can. Thank you for our great Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Thank you, Father, for the great spoil he has given to us by the victory he wrought on that cross and through his resurrection. I ask your blessing now upon this time in Christ's name. Amen. Go to Psalm 119, please, as you're being seated or transitioning, if you will. Oh, we can't use that word now because it might mean you're going from a do to a weirdo or some stupid thing like that. Uh, Psalm 119. The Bible says as David goes back to recover his two wives and everything that the Amalekites took at Ziklag, there's a word that you notice kept popping up through that. The word was spoil. Now, through your journeys in life, you may have heard this phrase, to the victor go the spoils. That means whoever wins in the battle, whoever wins in the engagement, whoever wins in the war, they as the conqueror, as the winner, get to take everything that the enemy has. Whether it's buildings or land or food or clothing or people or cattle, whatever it is, when you as the victor take over and defeat the enemy, you get everything they have. It belongs to you because you defeated them. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus Christ defeated our enemy, the devil. He defeated what Adam and got back what Adam lost in the garden. And now you and I are subject to and have access to the greatest spoils we could ever want in our lives. But here's the problem. We still get associated or associate spoils with physical things. When in our Christian life, our spoils are spiritual things. Uh, you may not make it through life healthy, wealthy, and wise. You may not. You may have a bad knee, a bum hip. You might get cancer. You might not have any money to your name, but my friend, if you're saved in Jesus Christ, you have every spoil you could ever have for all eternity. It's a spiritual thing, not a physical thing. But in the day of modern day, even amongst us as Bible-believing Christians, we fight against and we struggle with the old man, the old flesh, and thinking that physical comforts and uh, contentment comes from, you know, the worldly gain. It doesn't, folks. Our spoils come from that book and what God promised to us through that book. I want to show you something over in Psalm 119. It's pretty neat. Now, remember who the author is for 90% of the book of Psalms. And though Psalm 119 is not directly attributed to David, you can tell by the heart and the writing of this that David was the man God used to pen this. Now, Psalm 119, Lord will, I'm going to start, I, I don't know if it's going to be this year, or we'll start next year, but I'm going to preach through all the 22 chapters. That's what I believe God would have me to do. And go through every one of the eight uh, verse uh, stanzas and go through and preach all these letters of the Hebrew alphabet. That's what these 22 times 8 are in the Psalm 119. This is the chapter on the Word of God. There's no other book, passage, or anywhere in this Bible that concentrates on the wonderful blessing of God's Word than this chapter right here, Psalm 119. Look with me over in 162. Now remember, I said that to say this. David just got back all the spoils of war you could ever imagine. In fact, he has so much stuff that you know what he says when he goes to Judah? Uh, here's a present for you. Oh, and the guys at Hormah. And uh, you know what? I have so much stuff that I took back from the, my victory. I want to give it to everybody. That's the man. That's that, that general, that, that great warrior that God made king over Israel. Well, look what the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 161. The Hebrew letter is shin. Verse 161 says, Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. Here's a guy that just took over all the Amalekites. He took back everything that was lost. He got his wives back, and he says, you know what? I rejoice at your word as somebody that got back great spoil. I wonder if that's you and me today. Or do we still love the things of the world so much that, yeah, it's just that book. Ah, it's just, you know, it's just words on a page, and okay, yeah, i got to deal with it on Sundays or Sunday mornings or whatever, but I, you know what, I'm not really going to. You know what, the man that actually had physical great spoils through his victory over those Amalekites, you know what he said? 
I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. In other words, you know what he said? I'd rather have God's word than have all the treasures I could possibly get from mankind. Now, I said earlier that Jesus Christ, the Bible says over in 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, that he always causes us to triumph. That we are more than conquerors through him. So if our Savior has spoiled principalities and powers, you know what he's given to us? The abundance of everything he took back from the enemy, and it's all found in this King James Bible. I hope this will be a blessing to you today. You don't need anything but this book, folks. This book tells you how to pray, what to pray, when to pray. It tells you how to assemble, who to assemble with. It'll tell you, if you ask God through reading the Bible and seeking some it'll tell you where to work. Oh, I don't believe that. You don't think that God that saved you knows where to put you for a job to tell people about his son or to be a good witness and testimony? You don't believe that? The God that can rescue you from hell doesn't know what he's doing through this book? Folks, this book has more riches and treasures in it than anything you can get in this life. Uh, Bill Gates is going to die one day. If he dies without Christ, you know where he goes with all his billions? Right to hell. You know where Elon Musk is going to go when he dies? If he dies without Jesus Christ? Right to hell. Oh, it's Tesla and the cars. and Right to hell, buddy. You know why? Because you thought the spoils of this life were greater than the spoils of that book. <laughs> that King James Bible. I had a guy one time walk by me out in front of the Excel Center. He walked by. You know, he's a, he's a cool guy. He's got his friends with him. So he's got to be a cool guy. I get it. But he goes, why don't you start reading something from this century? Oh, so you actually know where it comes from. That's a good start. I said, that thing's more up to date than anything written in the last 100 years. Because it's God's mind on paper. He thought that all the other novels by Stephen King and John Grisham and everybody else, they, he thinks that stuff in science books and math books are greater spoil than that book. They're not. Heaven and earth shall pass away. My words shall not pass away. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Isaiah 40, verse number 8. This book's not going anywhere, folks. And I'm trying to get your attention to it as my brothers and sisters in Christ, and that's been the focus you say for the last year. It's been the focus since you guys have known me. I have nothing to offer you, but I can give you that book. The Spirit of God can take that book and do something in your life. You're like, folks, this is the greatest treasure trove of stuff you'll ever have in your life. Now, remember what happened when he goes and spoils the Malachites. He comes back. He, I'm sure he's got oxen and ass and sheep. He got his two wives back. I'm, he, he got everything. He got everything those folks, those Amalekites took at Ziklag. Well, I want to show you today what the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. And I understand if you're saved, you have the greatest gift ever given to mankind. But after he triumphed over all that and he caused the triumph, he gave you the book as your repository of spoils. Look what the Bible says over me in uh, uh, Job chapter 23. You're going to run some Bible this morning. Like that's a shock. It shouldn't be. Job chapter 23. Actually, you know what? Go to Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8 first, please. The first thing I'd like to say is this book is your food. <laughs> this book is your food, man. I'm talking spiritual food. I know you're not going to peel the pages off and saute them in a pan with olive oil, you know, and shove in all your meat like Guido and Clemenza. You're not going to do that. But it's talking about a spiritual application where this book, my friend, is your spiritual food. You're not going to get spiritual food from Joel Osteen and uh, uh, what's that? Uh, I keep forgetting her name. That's probably a good thing. The big linebacker looking chick. Uh, that, Joyce Meyer, thank you. And all you people that watch her, you just do, outed yourself out. Good job. But Joyce Meyer. And I'll, listen, man. You know what? The book is the source of your food. You alone with your Savior. This is your bread, man. This is what sustains you throughout the day. When your wife is mad at you and your people at job don't want to be here, this book is your spoils, man. I'm going to start with the off number one. When you spoil the enemy, you get all their food supplies. Well, look what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter number eight. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. Verse number one, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. I understand he's talking to Israel. I understand that. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Did you just see what he contrasted there? You need earthly bread. You need physical food. But you know what you need more, Israel? You need my words. You don't just live by bread alone. You live by this book. 
This book is your life. This book is your food. This book is your sustenance. The spoils of this book, that man, they don't feed you something. Folks, there is something only God can do for you. And he's going to do it through this book. Will God operate outside this Bible? Nope. Will God maybe take a verse and apply it different to your life? Yep. But he's not. You know how God confined himself? God can do anything he wants. The Lord has done whatever he ple- whatsoever he pleased. That's Psalm 115, verses 1, 2, and 3. He can do whatever he wants. But you know what he did? He says, I'm going to confine myself to 66 books. 1,189 chapters, 31,132 verses, I think something like that. I may get that wrong. I'm going to confine myself to what this book says. I, in fact, I'm going to put my mind down on paper. That's how great he is. He can put everything down in a book and never disrupt anything going on around and never disobey it. And it contains everything. You know what he said to those folks? You've been walking for 40 years. I fed you. I clothed you. That, that bread from heaven, that manna you guys called manna, I want to tell you, that was important because you need physical sustenance. But you know what you guys need more? You need the words of God. That's what you need. I don't know how much time you spend with that Bible. But you know what? You don't feast on it, you'll become spiritually emaciated. Nobody else might see it. You might put on a good show coming to church. But you know what? God knows what's going on in your heart. I don't, the preacher doesn't know what's going on in your heart, but God knows you're like one of those, and I'm not making fun of this when I say this, please don't take this away, but you know, you see those, uh, those commercials with those kids that are starving in India and Africa, and they're emaciated, and you see their ribs, that's what some of you guys are spiritually, because you're not spending time in this book. You're not feeding on the Bible. Well, I read my verse today. That ain't going to cut it. You eat more than once a day, buddy. You have snacks, you have everything you need, so don't I. God said, the words out of my mouth are what will feed you. Do you need manna? Yeah, you do. Do you need a piece of steak once in a while? Yeah, yeah, you do. But you need my book more than you need anything. That's a spoil, man. What a great spoil. God says, you just need me and you and that book. Well, Lord, you know, listen, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You know what all those things are added? Food and raiment. You go after him first, somehow he'll always fill your belly physically. But he says, you know what the first spoil is? This, this book, this word. It'll feed you. Go to Job 23. Job 23. There's be a lot more excitement about the book today. Maybe you guys aren't reading your Bible. I don't know. Maybe you're not spending time with them. I don't know. I sincerely don't know. I'm not being smart when I say that. But you know what? The spoils of war go to the victor. And you and I are victors in Christ Jesus. And the spoils he's given to me, Job 23, are found in the, the, the compilation of these 66 books. So he says it's bread. Look at 23, 12, uh, 23, 12 of Job. 23, 12 says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Miss a meal for the Bible? Miss some entertainment for the Bible? Shut the TV off, go read your Bible? Put down the phone for a few minutes, read your Bible? Well, I didn't realize this was going to be so difficult this morning. This is your life, folks, as a child of God. We don't come to church. I mean, we come for the book, man. I need to be fed. But if you're not being fed during the week, you're going to think, this is gross. Cold oatmeal mixed with vomit and gummy worms. This should be the first day of the week, which it is the first day of the week. I've been doing this for the last six days. Preacher hit me with it. I've been filling myself with the word all week, man. This is just adding more to my diet. Oh, what's on the menu today? Some Bible. Oh, praise the Lord. I've been, I've been, more, more? I get more Bible? Oh, more Bible. You're filling yourself with the wrong stuff, folks. Job said, oldest book on the face of the earth, I esteem the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Oh, that's a great verse to quote. Really, is it really that important to you? He said it was bread. It was, it was more important than bread, and it's more than my necessary food. Go to 1 Peter chapter number 2. 1 Peter chapter number 2. 1 Peter chapter number 2. I don't know what you spend your time on. I really, and honestly, it's none of my business. I'm a preacher of the Word of God, and I've been for a long time, and this stuff hits me hard right between the eyes too because I am a waster of time. Well, not you. Yeah, I waste time. 
I waste time. It's not a funny thing to confess, but I'm a time waster. Well, you've read through that Bible? Yeah, and I still waste time. The Bible says this in 1 Peter chapter number 2, verse number 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You know what you give babies when they're growing up? You don't throw them a steak. You throw them the milk of the word. But how are you going to grow spiritually if you're not around the book? Again, church is just part of the, what I do, just because it's just what I do as a saved person. But you have to get in this book for yourself every day. Well, I need somebody to help feed me. That would be discipleship. But once you get past that, man, you know what? I can feed myself now. Most of you folks in here are mature Christians. You're, you've been, I don't mean that in an age-wise. I mean, you guys have been saved for a while. You ought to know that the Word of God has to take precedence in your life. You need milk once in a while. You know, even after you're a child, you grow up, you still, still need milk for vitamin D. You still need milk to help you grow. You ought to desire it like a babe. Man, I can't wait to get a cool glass of milk. You know what? I don't know about you. I do like chocolate. Chocolate is my gig. Not chocolate and peanut butter and chocolate and spearmint. No, that's gay. Chocolate. Flat out just it, maybe some walnuts because the kid's got me cookies, so I have to give him some props. Chocolate, well, I can do that. But you know what? There's nothing better than taking a big, fat chocolate chip cookie and a glass of milk and dunking that bad boy in that milk. And you know how you know when you can eat it? When the bubbles go away because you know it drowned, it's dead. <laughs> you know that cookie's dead because the bubbles are gone away, and then you can eat it. He's dead. Boom. Throw it on me. He stopped breathing. <laughs> yep, that, that's probably the only thing you'll remember this whole sermon. <laughs> Oh, Father, Father, I failed miserably. I'm just going to just jump out the window. Well, the glass one. But there's not... Did you just say yeah? Wow. I mean, take it right. I mean, the woman took over the church Wednesday night. I actually had to sit down as she assumed the pastorate. And then I can't... I mean, this is a conspiracy, man. There's nothing like a cool glass of milk with that, that chocolate. It just sets it. I mean, that's the perfect set. You know what? You get that Bible, man. It is the sincere milk of the word. There's nothing better than taking a long drink from that, of that milk going down. It'll help you grow. It'll fortify you, man. There's a reason why they give milk to babies when they're growing up. It's necessary to them. You as a child of God need the food of this word, the bread of this word, and you also need the milk of this word to help you grow. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Please. Psalm 119. What's that? <laughs> Psalm. Psalm 119. <laughs> Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Look at this one, folks. You know, there's not many foods that are non perishable. Almost every food, there's certain types of beans, uh, white rice, I believe, can last a long time. I know Twinkies will make it through the nuclear war. Uh, when we come back from uh, the judgment seat of Christ after a seven-year tribulation period, there'll be Twinkies down here at the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's no question about it. But you know what one of the foods that lasts forever and preserves the best is? Honey. Look at 103. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. This book is preserved forever, and it's sweet. Is it always sweet when you read it? No, sometimes it's bitter, like John found out. It's sweet to the taste, but it's bitter in my belly. That's good. That's God convicting you. It goes down sweet, but God says, you've got to change some stuff. But boy, what, what kind of honey do you and I have in this book? It's so sweet to think, to think that God would put his words on paper. What he thinks about eternity, heaven, and hell, and his son, and he'd put it into the book and say, here you go, here's the spoils of war for you. You can have whatever you need on it. In fact, it's everything you'll need. Here it is, son, daughter. You want to read it? Or are you just going to go entertain yourself with something else? Spiritual famine's coming for the hearing of the words of the Lord. I don't want to, I don't know that's a tribulation period, but there might be some foreshadowing. Now, people don't go to church to hear the word of God anymore. They want to see the dancing girls and the leotards. They want to see the smoke show and the entertainment. They, want, they don't want the book. That's boring. This will keep you out of trouble, buddy. This thing will keep your mind right. 
Not that foolishness up on the stage they're pulling, playing stinking, uh, what's that stupid thing, cornhole in the middle of a church. You're an idiot. Well, we're doing to reach the world. Come out with me a couple hundred times a year. I'll show you how to reach the world for Christ. Idiot. Well, let's substitute the Bible for cornhole or some other stupid thing. Good job, buddy. You know what? There's a part of me. This is where that mercy gift doesn't really ring well with me. I just got to say, this is where the mercy is going. I can't wait to see the Lord smack the tar out of you, stupid. Yeah, Dave Brown's going to get his, but I'm going to sit back after I get whipped in the corner whining. Don't hit me anymore. And I'm going to say, get him, Lord. Get him, get him. They played cornhole in your den. They made it a den of thieves, Lord. I know the Bible. <laughs> Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5. If you don't know what that means, good. Praise the Lord. But that's what churches are doing now. Let's entertain the sheep. And then you, pretty soon before you know it, you've got a bunch of goats running around. Hebrews 5. And you shouldn't be like that. No, you know what? I'm freaked out about the judgment seat of Christ. I don't know about you. I'm worried beyond belief. I've got to tell my Savior everything I did for him in the flesh. I don't know about you. I'm going, but I'm going to give it a try. I'd like to work out and be in shape. You going to try? I'd like to, be, I'd like to memorize the Bible. You going to read it? It's your food, man. That's the number one spoil. They come in. Wow, look at David. Was it, you, look at the grain bins they left. You see how much barley and wheat they left? Did you see the cattle they left for us? <laughs> That's ours now. We, we beat them. And God says, oh, I got all the food you'll ever need right here. Right here. Hebrews chapter number five. Necessary food, bread. Look what the Bible goes on to say. I, there's a ton of these. I can't do them all. I'm not, not going to try and do them all. Verse number 12 says this, Hebrews 5, 12. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as, uh, have, uh, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. So milk does serve a purpose, but you've got to move on. Okay? Uh, spiritually speaking, look what the Bible says in verse number 14. But strong meat belong to them that are full age. That's not just chronological. That's spiritually. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know what the Bible says right here? It's not just milk and, 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 and honey and all that. You know what it is? It's meat. I like steak, man. I'm not vegan in any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I saw a commercial for, uh, for a Burger King doing... Uh, uh, a, a soy burger or some weird, a cardboard burger, <laughs> keep it. I'd rather have the ground kangaroo you're serving. I don't really care. <laughs> or the horse, I don't really care. But I ain't eating a plant burger, a plant burger. What planet are you from, man? Well, we're trying to help. No, listen, man, we don't need no Adam diet, garden meat diet. Give me some meat. It's got some aminos in it, some other creatine in it, and it just tastes good going down. That's the way the Word of God's supposed to be to you. That you go beyond the meat and you know what? I need a little more. I want a little more. Man, I'm not fully... Well, feed me! I'll never, I'll never forget the analogy. I don't know if Dr. Ruckman came up with it, but he said, you know, when he preached and, when he preached and he teached, Dr. Ruckman would say this, I got to put some cookies on the top shelf and I got to put some cookies on the low shelf. You know what he meant? Some folks are spiritually still growing. He goes, but you got some giraffes in there that need some meat. you got to be able to teach both. But that book can do it, man. It's a great spoil. It's a great spoil. You know what David said? Eh, no, I remember Ziklag. You know what? I remember a lot of battles, but I rejoice at thy word as one that found great spoil. David was the greatest warrior king that nation had ever known. And you know what it says in Psalm 119, 162? Nothing comes... All the things I've accomplished in life, nothing is as good as when I sit down and crack open that Old Testament. Nothing fills me. I could look at all my coffers of all the jewels and the crowns I got. I could look at all the people I've conquered. But man, I can't wait to read Genesis tonight. I can't wait to get to Leviticus. Because he counted the great spoil. Go on me to Psalm 119, back to Psalm 119. We got, we got, we got to move a little bit. I, I can't get through all these. I literally have probably 40 verses. And right then you're like, oh, man. Seriously, we ain't doing all 40. No, nope, 39 and a half. Psalm, uh, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Next, you know, what, you know what else is a spoil? You get to take over their water system. You get to take over their water system. You know what? You need food and water to live, but you know what you specifically need? Water. Water is 
the thing that keeps you really living. You do need food. I, I understand that. But water is absolutely crucial to you. Look at Psalm 119, verse 9 says, Wherewithal, uh, the, the letter is Beth. Verse 9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? You know what will keep your way clean? The spoil of God's word. You know what will keep you and help you to get victory over your sin? The word of God. You know what will keep your mind and your heart and your thoughts clean? The word of God. Why do you memorize that book like that? Because I have consistent problems with my thought life. I have consistent problems with thinking about wanting to run people over with my car. No, not consistent. That's a bad term to use. Okay, 8 out of 10. I struggle with that stuff, man. And then the Lord says, uh, uh, why are you soon angry? Uh, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Get that thing taken care of. You get that from the spoils of God's word. And right there, the Bible says that's water that can cleanse you. Ephesians, uh, actually, John 15. John 15. John 15. Yeah, we're definitely not going to. That's okay. We'll get through as many as we can. John chapter 15, please. The spoils of the word. Not the spoils of war. My victor, my captain, your savior, my savior has already won the war. But now he says, enjoy the spoils. Look at the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The picture again of water. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Please, Ephesians chapter 5. I don't have much for a preacher that doesn't go to the Bible when he tries to give counsel and help the people. I can only give you humanistically what I think is right, but I know somebody who can give you the absolute counsel, the purest counsel, and the cleanest counsel, and it comes from the spoils of his word. I want to hear what thus saith the Lord. If I want to hear what the world thinks, I can flip on the TV, the news, YouTube. I want to hear what thus saith the Lord. Not what Ned Lamont says and Joe Biden, Donald Trump. I want to hear it. I'm a child of God. Are you a child of God today? I want to hear what my father has to say. I want the spoils he has for my life. And it's found in this old King James Bible. Look what the Bible says over me in 5, uh, 525 of Ephesians. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. Proverbs 25. We are going to pick up the pace a little bit, but that's good. You know how God cleanses you? You know how he washes you in your daily walk? That word. That book is the water of God's life and mind down to you and I. The problem is we slake our thirst with everything in the world. So when you hear the Bible preached, the Bible taught, or that Bible's talking to you as it's on your nightstand, you're not thirsty for it. When you consume your thirst with other things, you're not very hungry or thirsty for the Word of God. That's why it's such a great sport. You've got you to get to it, man, and you've got to read it. I, again, Folks, I don't know how much you read. I'm not there to monitor you. I'm not your hall room monitor. But if you want the spoils of God's word, you want the treasures and the riches that he has for you, they're found in this book and nowhere else. Church fellowship, wonderful. Messing around with each other, having a good time, wonderful. What does God say and what does God have for me in that book? That's the business we're here to do. Uh, I heard it, and you know what, it actually hit me this week, I was listening to some preaching, and a preacher said, he goes, my, my boys, this, he's talking about his family, he goes, my boys used to always bother me when the Super Bowl came around to rent a TV, because they didn't have a TV, to rent a TV to watch the Super Bowl. And the preacher said, well, I, you know, they run the Super Bowl right around when church is, and his boys would say to the preacher, well, dad, I mean, really, it's once a year. It's the Super Bowl. And you know what the preacher said? He goes, you know what, guys? If Beach and Vic or John Rawlings were preaching down the street and the Super Bowl was the same night, I'd rather go hear them preach. I'd rather go hear a good preacher preach than watch football. You say you're spiritual. No, I'm just telling you, I'd rather hear a good man. 
I'd rather go hear some good old-fashioned preach. I've drive, driven hundreds of miles to go hear a good preacher preach. I'd rather do that than sit there and watch a football game. You know why? The spoils of his word are much better than the spoils of this world. Every time. I don't know where that is for you. I don't know, man. I hope you fall in love with your Savior through this book. Look what the Bible says in 2525. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. You got the best news from the furthest away country ever when God gave you this King James Bible. When he sent his son from glory, folks, you don't know about eternal life. You don't know about heaven. You don't know how to fellowship with Christians. You don't know how to have joy, peace. You don't know anything without this book. That's how essential it is to our lives. It's the spoils, man. I'd rather have a million dollars, not me. If I lost this Bible or the little one at home that everybody wants, if I lost that, I'd kill myself. <laughs> this Bible, this one right here, I don't know how many thousands of notes are in here. I would die if I lost that Bible. You can have my car. I'd miss my car. I'd lose my mind if I lost my Bible. Is that the same for you? Would you be upset if you lost your Bible? My life is in here. Well, what about your kids? Yeah, uh, 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 tramp a child the way you should go. Yeah, yeah, there's that Bible again. That's the attitude you got. It's a wrong attitude. My life is this book. Is it yours? Well, that's because you're a preacher. This has been 30 years plus, folks. This life is my book. It doesn't just pop on the scene. This life is my book. Because it's the spoils of my victor, Jesus Christ. And it's good news from a far country. Right down on the pillow, right to me. Written in King James English. There you go. What are you going to do with it? Cool stuff, man. Jeremiah chapter 20. You know what else you got? It has an, it's an energy source, particularly for fire and heat. Go to Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah 20. The spoils of the word. David, a conqueror. David, a, 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 an unbelievable warrior king. Still wanting to go fight out, fight the, the sons and the brothers of the giant like we saw Wednesday. Still wants to go at it and swing a sword. And, and he says, I'd rather have his word than I would going out to battle. I rejoice at thy word as one that found great, great spoil. Man, I found a lot, I, man, I've got a lot of great spoil. I really do, but nothing like cozying up with Deuteronomy. Nothing like reading Isaiah. I'm trying to make a practical application to you today. Jeremiah chapter number 20. The Bible says this in verse 7. 20 verse 7 of Jeremiah. O oh Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil. But the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Lord, everybody makes fun of me. They mock me. They see me carrying my Bible. They see I got scripture signs on my car. They don't like, I, Lord, I've had it. I'm never doing this again. All they do is spit at me and mock me. And I, you know what? They make fun of me every day. I'm not talking about you ever again. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up my bones, and I was weary with forbearing. I could not stay. I tried to stop talking about him. I couldn't. I tried to get away from the burning of his word. I couldn't. You know, brother, sister, you go back to the world, you will be miserable. Oh, well, that, uh, you will be miserable. Because you know what's burning inside you? The word of God you've picked up over the years. The messages you have tucked away, where God dealt with you. Times you've run on your own where God dealt with you one on one, face to face, heart to heart. Jeremiah says, I'm done. I've had it. And you know what revives in him? The burning of the Word of God. And it's like a fire. It just consumes me. I don't want to talk about your 15th vacation, your 20th house. I don't want to, I want to talk about the Word of God. How about you? Well, let's have some fellowship, brother. Well, you want to talk about the Word of God, or maybe you need a prayer, uh, a prayer request you can pass on, or some of you witness to. No, I want, I want to talk about, we're going to Tahiti again. Well, good. You're saved, right? Yeah, but I, that Bible thing. No, this is my life, and it's supposed to be your life. The spoils of the Lord. Jeremiah said, I'm done. I've cooked. I've had it. I'm never talking. You know what? I'm so, I'm so done with this Christian thing, and then the Word of God just... You ought to thank God for that, that it keeps burning in you, man. 
When that thing goes damp, look out. That doesn't mean you're not saved. It just means have at it. I want that thing burning in me. You got, we're not going to turn there. Do you remember Luke 24 when the boys are on the road to Emmaus and Jesus Christ comes up and they don't even know who it is. And he, he unveils everything in Moses, from Moses and the prophets about himself. And you know what? When he gets ready to leave, he breaks that bread, he gives thanks, and they realize who it is. And you know what they said one to another? Did not our heart burn? While he opened us the scripture, you know what? That's the best heartburn you could ever have. Your heart burns its fire, its energy, because of that book. Why do you witness the way you do? Because people are going to hell. Well, why do you know that? Because the book says so. Why do you pray like that? Why do you? Because the book says so. It's greater to me than a million dollars in the bank. It's greater to me than having all the bills paid. That's the way it should be for you. I, I rejoice at thy word more than... Great, just like somebody who found great spoil. I, you know what? I love that book more than anything I've ever done. And right here we just saw it's also a fire source. It's a heat source. It's an energy source. Go on with me to Psalm 119. Go to Psalm 119, please. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. So many of these, man. It's amazing. Also in Jeremiah 23, it says, Is not my word like a hammer and a fire that break them in pieces? It's an energy source. You ever wonder we, why you see some of these preachers at 70, 80, 90 years old, and they're like, uh, they're like uh, Caleb, who wants to go out and take a mountain? Where do they get that burning in their belly from? Right here. It's a fire God lit in them the day they got saved. Yes, they may have waned, they may have failed, they may have uh, backslid, they may have gone and fell, but they're not going to quit because of the fire this book gives off in their belly. I like that, man. I like to see somebody who's enthusiastic. You know what? There are people that believe in NIV more than some of you folks believe the King James Bible, and they love God better than you do. They just don't know because nobody had the benefit of the teaching you guys have had. And they love God with a fervency and a burning desire with the wrong book. What's our excuse? And they pursue after God with the wrong book because nobody's ever taught them. You know why? The fire's burning in them, man. Because they love their Savior, and they love the book. I know it's the, I know it's the wrong book. But see, you just defaulted to that. Well, it's not the right Bible. I know it. Believe me, I know it. But boy, some of their zeal and passion I could deal with. I could use some of that in my life. I could use some of that burning, the burning in a fire, and that light. it comes from this book. Look what the Bible says to me in Psalm 119, verse 89. We won't get to the other ones. I quoted them. The letter here is Lamed. Psalm 119, verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. You know what a great spoil this word is? It's the highest authority in all the universe. Do you know nothing happens without God saying so? Do you know nothing transpires in this whole, all the galaxies and the universes, nothing happens without God saying so. The devil can't even come at you without God giving him permission. The words, uh, the words of God hold together, the Bible says in uh, Hebrews 11, these are all framed by the Word of God. Jupiter, uh, oh, Pluto's not a planet anymore because somebody smarter than me said it wasn't. Uh, all the stars, they're, they're all, it, it all hangs together by the Word. His Word's the ultimate authority in the universe. You know what's going to happen one day? This is all going to go away. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, folks. That's 2 Peter chapter 3. It's, the elements being on fire, they're going to melt with a fervent heat. This is all going to be done one day. But you know what's still going to be around? The glory of God, the souls of men, and that book. It's settled in heaven forever. You know who, only, you, you know who the only folks in the, the whole creation argue about the word of God? Mankind. It's settled in heaven. You know what? When the trees, when God causes the wind to blow, what do the trees do? When the am, animals obey God. They're, going to, they're waiting for Jesus Christ to come back. They're going to clap their hands. You know what men do? Get out of here. The only thing in God's creation that doesn't obey that word is his creatures, mankind. There's no arguing about that word in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One day God's word's going to have the rule down here. You ought to get that to me, that's comforting. Because I don't have to listen to what Fox says or CNN or whoever you listen to. I have the final authority 
and the final say-so on everything in this King James Bible. L let him talk, man. Your father gets the last word. You know what it says? Even so, come quickly. Amen. We win because of our father. That's a great spoil. That calms me. Haven't you ever noticed how crazy the world's gotten late recently? I mean, it's going downhill in a fevered pitch, and not just in America, all over the world. You know what hasn't changed? God's book. You know what hasn't changed? God's thoughts and feelings on things, all written in a book. How much time do you spend with it? Folks, you want some treasure, some spoil? Get in this book. I don't, I don't know. What's my boss thinking? What's my job? What's God say? That will help you with your boss. That will help you with your job. That will help you with your family. What does God say? It's a great spoil. David, didn't you just wipe out all those Amalekites? I did. Didn't you beat Goliath? I did. But I'd rather have the spoils of God's word, man. Really? Yeah. It's more important to me than anything I've ever accomplished in this life. Go on with me. Man, this is just out of control. While you're right here, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 105, go, go uh, actually, we're, we're at verse 89. Go to, go to Psalm 119, verse 105. The letter here, the Hebrew letter is Nun. You have a man called Joshua, the son of Nun. Look at verse number 105. The Bible says this, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Go to 128 with me while you're right here. Verse number 128, same chapter. Look at Psalm 119, verse 128. I, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Look at verse number 130 while you're right here. The entrance of uh, the Hebrew letter is peh. Verse 30, uh, 130 says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Go with me to Isaiah 55, please. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. You know what else I find is a spoil here? It gives guidance and stability. You just read that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The entrance of thy words giveth light. You don't have the entrance of God's word to you. Open the book up. Do you have a tough decision coming up in life? Ask the Lord. Ask him through the book. Who should I marry? Where should I work? What should I do with the money you've given me, God? Ask him. This thing will give you light and guidance better than any guru could ever give you. No, it's just words on a page. That's your problem. It's not just words on a page. It's the inspired, inerrant, preserved, perfect words and words of Almighty Word and words of Almighty God. Not just to save you, but to guide you through life. That's a great spoil, man. I don't know. Do you, do you have everything nailed down in life? Is every decision you make the right decision? Oh, I would go and consult the one who is wonderful counselor and find out what he thinks about it, but you can't do it if you're not in it. I don't know. I'm tossed, I'm tossed to and fro and everything. Get in the book and ask him. Well, he didn't give me an answer right away. Maybe he wants to see your fervency for how long you'll stick with it. Maybe he doesn't just want to give you everything so you turn, turn into a spoiled brat. Look at 55.8. 55.8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Thank the Lord, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. <laughs> if you fancy yourself a pretty smart person, you ought to read that and go, I don't know anything as I ought to know. Oh, God, I don't, God, you don't know how to fix cars, do you? Have you ever prayed before you go after that rusted bolt that won't come off, no matter how much WD-40 you spray on it? I've started doing that. It saved me a lot of knuckle busting and a lot of uh, interesting words that are still tucked away somewhere that come out. And you know what? He loosens the bolt for me. You know, it doesn't work. You're not in that book. Something else has got your heart and your mind. You think the treasures of this world and the philosophy of this world has got you better than this book. No, there's no greater spoil than this Bible. It will help you in everything if you just go to it. But you can't. Go to him if you don't know what he thinks and says. You ought to hide the word of God in your heart. You ought to memorize it. It's good for you. Well, that's too much time and effort. Not as much time and effort as you watching something on TV that you memorized a hundred times over. We kid around because we know the Godfather so well. 
Oh, what a shame I'd know the Godfather, not what God, my father, thinks. You say you keep saying that. I do. I do. It's a shame that I know that stuff and I don't know that Bible. But eh, who, who really cares? Just a preacher blowing his mouth off. And, well, okay. Seat the judgment seat. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse like that. This is so real, man. It ain't even funny. This is the most real thing you've got going on in your life. A book? Yes, a book. Not a book. If you say that, it's the book. So, uh, Ephesians chapter 6. The great spoils of his word. It's fire and heat, it's milk, it's, it's honey, it's guidance, it's light, it's, it's so much. You can't even put it all down in the short time we have together. Look what, you know what else it is? It's power and strength. Ephesians chapter number 4, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6, that's my fault. Ephesians 6, pick it up in verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You know what it is? It's power and strength. You know what the only offensive weapon you have here? Excuse me, there's prayer also in there. But you know what the main offensive weapon God gave to you and I in our spiritual battle? That sword. You know how Jesus Christ, the God of this universe, your Savior and my Savior, got rid of the devil? Quoting the Bible. It is written. It is written. What saith the scriptures? What? Why would God have to do that? Because he's laying foundation work for you and I. That the victory and that day-to-day -day thing. I know I have the victory in Christ overall, but my day-to-day -day wrestling, my day-to-day -day arguments, <laughs> those principalities and powers, I have an offensive weapon that they hate. Folks, if this Bible is not real, why do you think there's over 400 translations? If this book is not such a powerful weapon, why do you think man's been trying to change it and the devil actually since, and Eve, since the garden? If the word and words of Almighty God are, so, are not that important and not such a great spoil, why does the enemy come so hard after it? Because he knows. He knows what's behind it. A well-equipped soldier with that sword, he knows when to use it, when not to. He knows when it's time to fight and when it's time to rest. And he gets it all from relying on the spoils of that word. Folks, you've got your feet shot with the preparation of gospel peace. You've got the breastplate of righteousness. You've got the helmet of salvation. You've got, you, you've got all the armor. And then he says, oh, uh, before you go, you're going to run into some stuff out there. Here, take a sword. Whew. And he gives you the old King James Bible. He says, there's your weapon. Uh, that night, Jesus Christ is getting betrayed. What does he say to those boys when they ask him? Lord, Got a couple swords here, and he goes, that's enough. He even tells him, arm up. Now, that's a real physical thing in the garden. I understand that. I know Peter used his sword to cut the guy. I understand. But you know what the Lord says? Yeah, go get, go get, go get your sword. Go get your weapon. And he gave you one. So how about this morning? I mean, is the spoils of this world more alluring to you than the spoils of the word? Would you rather spend time with Phil Donahue and Sally Jesse Raphael and Sean Handy and those guys than Jesus Christ? Would you rather watch the newspaper? and watch? I didn't say it's wrong to watch sports. I didn't say that. But where do my spoils come from? The book. I'm a child of God, man. If you're a child of God, this is the repository of all the wealth we could ever have in our Christian life. I'm going to give you a couple more, and then we're, and then we're done. Go to Job. Uh, actually, go to Psalm 19. Psalm 19. It's guidance and stability. It's power and strength. It's the highest and ultimate authority. It's fire and heat. It's, it's, it's food. It's water. Man, everything you need is in this book, folks. Everything I need is in this book. Yeah, but you know what? He, no, what does God say? Yeah, but you know, what's God say? I'm trying to encourage you. It sounds like I'm not, but I real, sincerely, I am trying to encourage you that this Bible, man, it is our life. I want, you know what? I don't want to be known as a Baptist. I'm a Bible believing Christian. Because you know how many Baptists are off the hook? 
tongue-speaking, charismatic, snake handling, drinking poison. Some are hard shell, some primitive, Calvinistic. You know how many whacked out Baptists there are? But you know what's not whacked out? That King James Bible's not whacked out. It's, it don't change, man. But that's why people want to go change it. You, you would think, as say people, you'd want the simplest, convenient way to get things done. One book, one spirit, one savior, and oh, well, you know, what, use whatever version you want. Just, you know, whatever. What do you think, Guido, what do you think about today? Brother, what do you think today? How's your emotions? Are you feeling okay? What does God say? What does God say? I'm a simple person, man. I just want to go to one place and get everything I need for life. And God says, you got it. All the spoils you could ever want. You got it. You got it. It's right there. Oh, how much time you spend with it. Pretty cool. I want to say that it also gives you riches. You say, oh, I'm not very rich. I'm struggling with my car payment. I'm struggling with my house payment. You're looking at the earthly stuff, folks. You got to look to the heavenly. Look what the Bible says in Psalm Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. That's your, that's your verse from Psalm 119, verse 103. More by them is thy servant warned and keeping them, there is great reward. You know where you get great reward and gold and silver from? The book. What would you rather have? A paper bag full of $100 bills and $50 bills, unmarked, untraceable? Or this Bible? Would you rather have peace and tranquility with the world and be at odds with God or be at peace and tranquil with God and at odds with the world? I can't answer that for you. I can only preach the book and let him deal with you. But I know this has all the spoils, all the riches you could ever have. Folks, you've got the mind of Jesus Christ in front of you. The one that died for you and rose again the third day. The one that spoke and keeps everything into existence by his word. The one that's coming for you one day in the clouds, yet got everything he thinks about, every subject right here. Eh, I'd rather spend time with Bill O'Reilly. I don't even know who's out, even out there now. That's because you're getting spoiled by them and not spoiled by the word. Last one, 1 John chapter 5. You know what else the Bible is a spoil for? Eternal life. You know how you got saved, folks? You got saved from this Bible. You didn't get saved outside the Bible. You didn't get, you know, well, I didn't know all the Bible. You didn't need to, but I I guarantee you that whoever preached to you, whoever witnessed to you, they used the Bible. My brother John says that he got saved watching. You know what that preacher used on the TV? A Bible. You know what affected you? I knew I was going to hell and I was a miserable, rotten sinner because that Bible told me I was. And you know what he said? I just convicted you, and now let me give you some eternal life through the same words. He doesn't just convict you and leave you struggling on the side of the road like a wounded animal. He says, come on, come on, come on. And that book will give you eternal life. You know that Bible can save your soul or send you to hell. Yeah, hell's still in the Bible. We're not taking that out because God didn't take it out. Lake of Fire's still in the Bible. Not taking that out. It's not funny. People go there, but they do. You know why? They will not give ear or heart to that word. Because that word can save you. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Look at the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, and we will close. 1 John chapter 5, I think uh, Karen quoted this on Wednesday night when we were going through uh, questions and answers. 1 John 5 says in verse number 11, and this is the record. Oh, I, I like the home run record. I like the most goals scored in a season, the hockey record. Well, no, I, I've got a better record than that. And this is the record. Well, what about Led Zeppelin's last record? No, we got a better record. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. 
Over in John chapter 6, the words that I speak unto thee are spirit and they are life. And at the end of it, Jesus Christ says to the boys, will you also go away? And Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You can find the spoils of eternal life in God's holy book. It can take you from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, can deliver you from hell to heaven through that book. Because he wrote it down. How would you know how to get saved if he didn't write it in a book? Skywriting? Cloud formation? Dream? No. Somebody came to you, or you found a gospel track, but somebody you gave you this word, and God started working on you that you're lost and on your way to hell. And God said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And I'll, I'll save your soul. You know what? He wrote it in a book. What a great spoil that is. You know what the blessing is? I go get to tell somebody else what God said. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. You know why? Because his word doesn't change. Oh, it's, been two, it's been 37 years since he saved you. Do you think he changed his mind? No. Nope. Same plan today through the blood of Jesus Christ as he saved me 37 years with the words of eternal life. Save your soul right now. I like that. What great spoil. You don't think it's a great spoil to go from hell to heaven? think your buddies are in hell right now cheering you on no they're begging for somebody to go tell you and your family how to get saved and they'll get saved you know what uh, and I, uh, seriously I'm, uh, we're wrapping it up Luke 16 that rich man is in hell and what does he say father Abraham would you please send somebody to my five brethren please lest they come to this place of torment I mean, the rich man's thinking if somebody popped up from the dead, I mean, seriously, if somebody comes up from the middle of the earth, somebody's going to listen to that. I mean, that's a pretty spooky, freaky thing, right? You know what Abraham says to that boy? They have Moses and the prophets. If they don't hear them, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. This book, the great spoils, is it'll save your soul. But it'll also condemn you to a devil's hell, too, if you reject it. God doesn't want you to reject it if you're lost. I don't know if you're saved here today. But I know through this book, God can save your soul for all eternity. You have it in writing. These things have I written unto you. God can and will save that soul. But for you that are saved, man, it's got the riches, the milk, the meat, the honey, the light. It's got fire. It's got heat. It's got guidance, stability. Man, it's got every spoil you could ever want. Give your ear and your heart to it, Christian. Brother John Stavall, would you close the prayer, please? For the morning. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah, amen.
Yes. Amen.